Hi, it's Vaughn here from Boru Mastery. Have you ever had a moment where you really feel like crawling into bed and never waking up? Yes, I am recovering from the man flu. <laughs> oh, I was on the way home and then I thought, you know what? Before I check out for the day, I want to send a message to you that I think that uh, you really should hear. It is possible for you. You know, I, I, it's one of the key tenements, I believe, um, whatever your journey is, like wh whatever your path is, whatever you're aiming for, we need to hear messages of hope, messages of challenge, right? Things that are going to help us move the free line because we get so caught up on technique, we get so caught up on training, so caught up on competing, and like I was saying yesterday, so caught up in the the rituals of what we do that we rarely stop to think like what are we doing what's working and what isn't but also challenging us on a subconscious level is our belief systems right and I'm gonna use a couple of examples from students I work with and then on a broader community and world level Michael what's up how are you going I hope uh, hope Sydney's treating you well and retirement is amazing also quickly before I continue I want to give a shout out to RM hips uh, Michelle Sutton over in France. Uh, who else has been on this page? Oh my God, there's like so. I get emails every day now. You guys are crazy. I get, thank you for tuning into a lot of this work that I'm doing. It's great to see you actually improving, like literally all over the world. The content that we're sharing and I'm creating is actually helping many, many people. So check out boreamastery.com and boreamastery.tv um, to, to see a little bit more about what's happening there. But I wanted to bring a, a message that is on a deeper level that's going to fuel the work that you do wherever you are learning or whatever your goals are uh, in life. Now, one of the examples I use is a student I work with, Marie. She's uh, in her early 70s. She started dancing about six years ago, okay? But prior to that, she had um, no previous experience at all in dancing in her entire life. She went from newbie, and newbie like first legs, like a little giraffe trying to walk, and she's been competing with me on the world stage twice in the last uh, three years in Blackpool, England, and placed, you know, first, second, third in finals in world championships, right? Now, it's easy to think, well, maybe she's older and competing in a category of like geriatrics, right? It's like, no, that's a limiting belief. That's not true. It's actually extremely difficult to compete at that level at any age group, okay? not only um, the competitors, but the training behind it, the commitment, right? Like everyday training and doing lessons. Okay, so then you think, well, maybe it's because she was in that age category and it was just easier for her. That's not true, right? That's a limiting belief. But I found that people that think that way think that way when they're 20 as well. It's like, well, maybe I don't have the money and time. I'm in my 20s, I might be younger and more athletic, but I can't find the right partner or I can't find the right money or I can't find the right coach, right? I'm in the right, wrong location. Okay, so use your age against you um, in, your, in your older generations or use other excuses when you're younger. Either way, that's a limiting belief, right? And I found that whatever the scope of age range from 10 to 90, there's always a reason you can't do the thing, right? There's always something prohibiting you, right? That no matter what, like you can have all the money, you're still gonna have a reason you can't do the thing. Right? There's going to be a legitimate block, whatever you're going for, no matter how many, I suppose no matter how wealthy we become, we always lack something, right? We lack a connection, we lack a location, we lack some skill. And so what is it that fuels us to get to that next level? Well, I say, well, something like Marie it was like a belief system had to change, right? Something fundamentally has to drive you beyond your own limitations. And so I found when you have more reasons than excuses, you'll find the motivation to move into the realm you want to compete in, okay? Um, the fact you haven't done it before is not a reason enough that you shouldn't do it, okay? Everyone who starts is a beginner. Like every world champion started with nothing and from ground zero. Now it's true, some people have a bit more opportunity than others. I mean, it's an unfair world we live in. That's, that's not our place to worry about. What we've got to go is like, do we want it? Like, is that the thing you want? Connect to it on a deep level. Um, if it's in harmony with you, then that's going to really move you and pull you towards it, right? Because ultimately, if you're looking to really make things happen, 
you wanna have something called pull motivation versus push motivation. Now push motivation is using willpower, right? It's like when you know you've got 30 day challenge to conquer a diet and to like maybe ride the hills of France or something with your friends. And it's like you know you've gotta do this certain diet and train up. You use brute force willpower for that, right? And then that gets you there for 30 days, but you're exhausted at the end and it doesn't form a habit of doing it because you've pushed yourself through that barrier and you've achieved the goal. If you used something called pull motivation, it's pulling you towards it. It's like it gets you out of bed early and it keeps you up late at night, right? Like it keeps moving you. Like it's like an idea. I like the, the, word, I, the word ideal, right? The word ideal is like an idea that you're in love with. And when you're in love with something, like the person you love in your life, did you have to think about them? No, it's not like you wrote them down, unless you're a weirdo like me and you set them as a goal. <laughs> like, you don't really write them out, right? Like, you can't help naturally thinking about the person you love. Why? It's because it just sinks in your unconscious, it becomes part of you, and you just wake up thinking about this person. You're driving along, they appear on the bonnet of your car, right? Like, you just see them everywhere. You can't stop thinking about them. If you have that type of connection to what you're going for, that's pull motivation. Okay, for that to still have a fuel, you have to have a belief system that says, it's possible for me. And it's a great saying, if you can conceive it and believe it, you can achieve it. Now, as cliche as that is, it's true, right? Like Henry Ford would say this, and I suppose Napoleon Hill, but if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. And I want you to think about that. It's like, is that possible? Well, everything around us, like everything, you know, this, this was an idea, right? You know, v Richard Branson in the 80s said, oh, I wish I had a way to play all my songs when he was running his company, Virgin Media. I wish I could play all my songs um, in my pocket. And Steve Jobs read that in the 90s and thought, huh, what an interesting concept. Imagine if we could listen to the music in our pocket. Guess what happened from that? You know, the rest of the companies were, were selling, you know, uh, MP3 players saying, um, here you are, you can store 120 gigs on here. And people are like, what the hell does that mean? Steve Jobs comes out and goes, this, you can store 10,000 songs. And people just went, wow, that's amazing. You can play it from your pocket, right? And that happened because of an idea, right? So an idea you fall in love with. And that's what you got to think about. Now, everything starts in the mind. Like, that didn't exist at one point. Someone had to think of the design. Another very smart group of people or persons across the way had to think of the, the case, the inside, every component. That is every single thing we've ever done. Now, dancing's a perfect example of this. Alignment in dancing, I'll give you an example, doesn't exist. It's something we have to think about and conceptualize. But if you look at a floor, alignment isn't on there, right? Technique was invented so we could have better control, balance, and freedom ultimately, right? Because technique equals freedom. But everything you want, everything you're going for, if you can see it in your mind and you can truly believe it, not like a false belief, but a belief in your heart, like in your unconscious mind, in your subconscious, in the heart of hearts where you truly operate from, that's true power, right? That will pull you into the places that you don't really dare to go because you need courage, right, to enter those dark spaces. You're not gonna do it willingly sometimes. You're gonna do it like scared, like I'm not really ready for this test. I don't know if I can do it. That's precisely the thing you should do to grow. And so in my own life, for my own example, when I was uh, starting out in dancing, I didn't think I would ever do anything with it. I started to meet girls, right? Like I was like, that's a good place to meet chicks, right? And so what ended up happening though? Well, somebody encouraged me, like I wanna do for, for you. I wanna help you see there's more in you than you think, and you can do a lot more than you're settling for. And so I had a coach say, Vaughn, you should do dance sport. I was like, what the hell is that? I don't know what that means, right? Da I like sport, but dance sport? Come on, that sounds ridiculous. You can't compete in dancing. She ran one of the largest competitions in Australia. And so she p grabbed my hand, she grabbed Alison's hand, the two hands met. I looked at Allison and I looked at Penny. I looked at Allison and I looked at Penny. I looked at Penny. I said, can I dance with her? And she's like, yes. I went, I'll, whatever, man, I'll do it. That sounds good. I don't know what it is, but let's do that. I get to dance with her. That's, let's do that one. And so from there, you know, we just started doing another private lesson and then one private lesson a week. And we started training. I did a competition, totally bombed, totally bombed. Got on the floor, did the wrong dance and the wrong choreography to the wrong music, just totally screwed it up. Smiling my face off, having a ball, but fucked it up completely. 
Point is, is that that little push, that, that move in the right direction, we need that. But then it started to grow. Like I started to look at other dancers and go, oh shit, they are good, right? And I had these defining moments throughout my career where I watched other dancers and went, oh, is that what's possible for them? Now, thankfully, I had a coach outside of dancing, a life coach, a business coach, a mentor who said, listen, if you have seen someone else do what you want to do, that's positive proof, proof that you can do it. Now, there are, some, of course, in the dance world, there's going to be some physical limitations, but that doesn't matter, right? Like, you can do that thing. You know, and Prime's a good example of that. You can be 70 years old and never have picked up a dance class, start, and in a couple of years, go and do a world championship. If you're willing to do the work, right? Like, but it's possible. So my message to you today is to, do, is to not limit yourself by your own presuppositions about what you've done before and project those into the future and think, I can only do X, Y, and Z because in the past I've only done A, B, C, right? That will totally screw you in anything. If you are a raw beginner, you can become a professional dancer, all right? If you want to do it and do the work and sacrifice your entire life, it's possible. I don't know how long it'll take you. You might have to play the game for 20 years, okay? So this is not an overnight thing. It's a life commitment if you want to do something like that. But nobody should be there telling you you can't do it, especially other coaches. If other coaches are telling you what your limitations are in the sense of like what's possible, I'd really question the motivation of that coach because a lot of the times they do that to constrain you and keep you in your place for their benefit. A good coach will recognize what's possible and encourage you to move towards that. And of course, sometimes you've got to tell people like, look, maybe if you're 200 pounds, you need to lose weight, right? Like that's going to restrict you from becoming a professional dancer, right? You've got to do something about that. But that's normal advice, right? But nobody has hit their potential, right? So far as we know it in human history, nobody's reached the peak of potential and said, this is what it looks like, right? People keep redefining it. In the greater world, just as the last example, Ivan Spiegel, right, founded Snapchat. The guy was like 20 years old. Within two years, it's a billion dollar company. Now it's on the stock exchange, right? It's a multi-billion dollar um, value, right? In his 20s, Zuckerberg's the same. And you might think, well, they're young, they're techie, they can do that. That isn't the point. What about Colonel Sanders, right? In the 1800s, this guy was door knocking, door knocking chicken, going, check out a recipe, people. Cook this, this is amazing. That's how he started KFC, right? That was in the 1800s. He was in his 60s when he did that. Do you understand the point? Your age doesn't matter. That's a limiting belief. What matters is are you willing, right? And then what belief systems are you going to fuel? And one of the best ways to do this is you just keep challenging yourself, say it's possible, it's possible. But then you've got to put the work in, okay? You've got to keep measuring it. Now, there's a lot more to this. But if you've liked this, Karen, it's great to have you here. Michael, awesome. Michael, thank you so much. Awesome to have you. If you've liked this, let me know. Like, I've got some specific courses coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, that are going to be launched for you, you guys out there in the Boring Mastery community, on YouTube, on Facebook. Um, it's called Boring Mastery Academy. I'd love you to be part of it. I want to work deep with you in an exclusive membership area to help you not only formulate beliefs, but understand exactly what you need to do to do it quicker, right? like speed matters yeah like execution matters so it shouldn't take you 10 years to do certain things in dancing you can do it much faster i've learned a lot of this the hard way but trust me you can shortcut your learning and there's a really good way to do it now like you said it's never too late to get and the most important thing is never give up now i'm going to challenge one thing on this the never give up cliche um it can be bad advice sometimes and the reason for that is when you're looking at doing something Let's understand the never giving up is more about the notion of you need a level of stick to like going at it, but you have to recognize when what you're doing isn't working because that matters, right? Winners quit a lot. Like if you're going to look, if you're going to be serious about what you do, let's say you're like, I'm going to use Michael as an example, right? So <clears throat> Michael's a good friend of mine. I did some training and work for his company for a full year, right? Hey, Chloe, what's up? And uh, look, he made serious sacrifices to be the top of his game in our city in the field of orthodontics, right? Um, what he had to do when people weren't watching, right? People saw all the fancy stuff he could buy, the cars, like the beautiful lifestyle. 
but he had to seriously sacrifice for a long, long time, right? And nobody sees that. They see the fruit of the labor. They don't recognize it. And then they start to think, well, they're different. It's like, no, you've got to do it for years. And the point is, is that you've got to really want to do that. Now, by doing that, you quit on almost everything else. So it's like you can't do everything, right? So not, never giving up doesn't mean that you, that you try everything and you keep doing everything. No, you actually have to say no to basically everything else and focus on one or two things and master them and do them really well. I like to say go deep instead of wide, right? So like Chloe's a good example. She's a good friend of mine over in England. She's a film producer um, with uh, my boy Leroy. What's up? I just spent some time with him in England. And, you know, she's having to give up an enormous amount of opportunities in other areas because she's a very talented woman to go deep on building this. Will it work? Who knows? But you don't know unless you try, right? So the never giving up is about making sure when you're in that vein and you found what you're going for, you don't give up. But you have to know when to give up on the strategy, yeah? Because sometimes you're going to do something. It's just, actually, most of the time you do something, it's not going to work. It's going to fail a lot. And you fail forward, you fail often, that's good, right? Exactly in dancing. You fail forward, you fail often, you make mistakes every day. But you can't keep making the same mistakes. So it's like you, giving up on making mistakes is a good thing, right? You want to you work through them fast and you want to keep making new ones. I said to a, a student tonight, I was like, listen, you want new problems. I don't want you to come in every week and fix the same fucking problem. I want to fix new problems, right? What does that mean? It means like a new problem is new growth. You solve that problem, new level. Okay, as you do that, you start to build out your life and you get better. You bring a rich rewards and the circle of life expands, Simba, right? This is awesome. So listen, so good to have you here. Um, it's wonderful to all have you on this page. Check out boramastery.com, RSVP for what's coming up next. Oh my God, I got everyone tuning in. Elizabeth, awesome to have you here too. Young girl in the studio, connect with her. She just started her new business. So she's a little dancer, but a little budding entrepreneur. Got a business going. Actually, as I finish, I just want to mention two things here. Uh, a little story about Elizabeth about what's possible. Okay, so I've known her for a long time, right? She's been in the studio, her third generation, right? Like in the studio, her grandma started dancing, then her mom, I still teach her mom. Her sister, Olivia, dances, right? And so Elizabeth's a great story for anyone out there because, you know, just, it's like all heroes start in an ordinary, mediocre world, right? Like Canberra is like a mud pool in the world. It's just nothing. Like you don't go to holiday in Canberra. It's a political haven. It's boring as batshit, yeah? So dancing's like this vein of awesome and happiness, yeah? And so Elizabeth and I were talking and she's like, she's really good like quilting. She's really amazing at, um, at, at, at uh, like creating like handmade soaps and things. I was like, look, you can turn that into a business. It's like, boom, fear hits you. It's like very normal response because it's outside your comfort zone. It's outside what you know and anything we don't know, we reject and criticize instantly. And I said, but don't let that stop you, right? It's like, if you've seen someone else do it, it's possible for you. Like, don't look at what Alison and I have built now because it's, you look at that and there's no, you'll look at it and go, I can't do that. But you forget for like, 15 years before we had anything. We had no food, like we ate like one chicken breast between us like every two days. We had like holy shoes, we had no, no clothes. We went, didn't do anything except dance, dance, dance. That was our sacrifice, six days a week for like 15 years. It's like, so it's easy to look now and think you can do all this. I said, don't look at that. Go back to the beginning, realize like if someone else is do it, you can do it, but you need a belief system, right? And you need to be around people that encourage you. That's what these are for. Right? These messages are related to dancing, but they're related to what move you as a human to become better. Because as you develop the best version of yourself, you will find your dancing goes through the roof because they're related. All right? And it's not often talked about, but your mindset moves you in the right direction. So listen, thank you all for tuning in. Give some love and shout out to everyone. Share it, like it, put it out there in the cyberspace and the world. Thank you for everything. I love serving you and I feel better now. I think my man flu is going away because that's what happens when you give. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good luck with the interview, Chloe.